I, I don't think that when they were creating this yarn, they had a can Mare put it up against her face test, but it's not a bad one. And well, it doesn't itch that bad. Good day, friends. Last week we delved into the world of traditional Canadian knits by making a toque, complete with pom-pom. We've had snow this week, so it's time to cover the bare neck and hands. There was plenty of yarn left over from making the hat. I cast on with the leftover Lion Brand Wool Ease Stripe in Hudson Bay. I'm using the one ball of Rasta triangle cowl as a template, but the pattern's so dead simple it's almost ridiculous. Cast on an odd number of stitches and have at her in seed stitch until you finish a full ball of yarn. As I was using leftover yarn, I did some guesstimating. to attach the second ball, but fortunately the color pattern lined up beautifully. The pattern suggests stitching the ends together and sewing on buttons. Instead, I applied a crocheted border using some of the leftover solid colored yarn. Then I stitched the two sides together. I like the border. It just seems to add something. I'm leaving off the buttons to reduce bulk under my jacket. The V formed at the front is going to be really useful for those days when my neckline conspires to make me cold. I also forgot to wash and block the cowl when it was still in scarf form, so it's not as loose and relaxed as it could be. That's fine, I'll give it a gin and tonic later. Hands are cold, need mittens. Mittens, my friends, are dead simple. I measured my wrists, the widest area at the base of my thumb and around the top of the palm at the base of my fingers. Then I just kind of winged it. Seriously, I cast on stitches till it looked like I had enough, and then I used the ribbing pattern that looked best. So cast on 18 stitches using 8mm needles. Knit one purl one rib for about 10 rounds, then started the body of the mitt. The first time through, I only did a single round of plain knitting before starting increases. Bad idea. Wound up with a huge thumb socket area. The nice thing about these mitts is they knit up blazingly fast, so I ripped those puppies back to the cuffs and started again. Mm -hmm. 
On the first round, I increased to 22 stitches, which I'd already realized was the perfect size for my hand due to the last attempt. Put in another couple of plain rounds before doing an increase round. Basically, I chose two stitches near the side, increased by one stitch on the outside of those two stitches, and then kept going for another two rounds before doing it again. Increasing two stitches every three rounds meant a nice gradual widening of the mitten body. I knit a couple more plain rounds then slipped the eight extra stitches onto some waste yarn. I cast on two stitches to bring the number of body stitches back up to 22. Then I knit around and around until the mitt was just slightly longer than my longest finger. I then did three decrease rounds in a row, trying to decrease evenly. If folks are interested in the pattern, I'll toss something together in a PDF. Leaving out plain knit rows between the decreases gives that nice rounded look to the top of the mitten. I then ran the yarn tail through the last few stitches, pulled tight, and secured inside the mitten. I picked up the six stitches on the waist yarn, as well as four stitches from the body of the mitten on the other side of the hole. Knit around for eight to ten rounds until the top of my thumb was covered, then reduce evenly around. Again, cut the yarn and ran the tail inside, securing firmly. And we have a pair of mittens! I like them, they're very pretty. I purposely made them so the pattern doesn't match. It's enough that the colors are all the same. And with that, hat, mitts, and a cowl, I'm ready for winter. So this is what was left over after all three of those items were made, and that's out of three balls of this, so say about three quarters of a ball of the striped stuff's left over, and what, a third? A third of the ball of uh, the white? Fisherman white? I don't know if there's enough to make a pair of slippers out of this, but it's certainly tempting. So World of Warcraft's latest expansion comes out on November the 23rd, which means that if I want to get any kind of video done for that week, I'm gonna have to knuckle down. Because otherwise the Alliance Guards will be coming up to me in Stormwind going, Don't you have a sock you should be knitting? There will be more cosplaying a Canadian once I've gathered a bit more wool and found a couple of special patterns. Canada's pretty big and there are a few handcrafted wearables associated with the folks who live here. Links to everything I've discussed today will be in the description down below along with a link to my launch page with all my social media stuff. If you're new to the channel or you haven't yet subscribed, there are a couple of handy places for you to do so. If you ring the bell, you can choose to be notified when I post new videos. If you enjoyed this video, please do give me a thumbs up, and I'd love to hear from you if you'd like to leave a comment. Up here is a video that I think you'll like. The YouTube algorithm thinks that you'll like this one. Yarn. I like it. It's actually quite comfy. Feels pretty good. <laughs>